Hello, everybody. So, before I do the um, video for the template, I have a few things I want to take care of. First of all, I was wondering how everybody would feel about doing a swap, if I would have enough participation to do a swap. I was thinking, not like my giveaway swap, but like a real swap. But... Um, it would be my first, like, actual real swap, swap, um, where I would require certain things. I'm thinking that I would want to keep it simple, something where people don't have to go out and buy anything, uh, maybe a folder or something. Um, so, um, leave, um, something in the comments let me know if you would be interested, and if I get enough response, then um, I'll look at what to do. The next thing is I was asked what I thought about how these sentiments would cut out. And really, I thought they would be okay. Now depends on what you want them cut out for. If you want them cut out to use the sentiment, then I don't really think it's going to work because of the way these edges here, like right here and here, I think it might be kind of hard to get that curve right on there. See, this one might not be as bad, but, um, but as far as for the circle itself, I think it would be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and do, I'll cut the bigger one out of the actual circle. So if you wanted your doily to be just empty inside, blank inside, to have a hole in it, then... I would snip away as easy as possible. And then um, come in after, but see, you're not saving that because of that right there. So, you know, look at that you, so um, you would need to then smooth that out, and that might be easier to do with a craft knife than with the scissors. But I do think you could do that. I do think that nobody would notice that something was snipped out of there and you would have a hole in the doily but you know if that's what you want and you have nesting dies then you might have one small enough to cut in there now if we wanted to try to save the letters then we're looking at something completely different now you got to try to cut and save the letter. So you would need to try to cut enough of the edge and in, in the right see it's working but it's um you know I'm messing up my actual doily and if you were going to do this then you could just cut it out um and not do the whole doily does that make sense let me get this out let's see sending and then this maybe needs to go up a little bit and over 
So I still snipped a little. There's just a little too much snipped there. And you would need to smooth it out. So I would probably try cutting it here and here. So, you know, it's what it is. So, not too bad. You could, you could get away with it, probably. So, there's that. Saving the sentiment, but like I said, here's a little thin. You can maybe make it look like you wanted it that way. If you snipped a little bit off here. Let me see. And tried kind of rounding that out. So, you can, and that works, so you can do it, maybe not ideal, but it did work, so, alright, so let me know, um, leave something in the comments, if you're interested, if I don't get enough comments, um, I'll probably wait about a week or so and see how many comments I get. Sometimes my videos seem to take a little bit longer to get to people, so um, I'll wait about a week and see what kind of response I get. If I don't get a response and that much of it, if I just have a couple people say, yeah, I want to do it, then um, probably maybe just with those people and I could swap or something, but um yeah, um, so we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. So this, we're on number three of the Indigo, which is the first auto ship, but the second book. And, um, of course, this book is a lot thinner. You know, she told us the um, auto ships wouldn't have as much of it in them. So this book is thinner. The other book is thinner with the pictures because there's not as much in them. No dies came with it this time. Nothing like that. It was just the book and the just the two books. This is a double gatefold card. So we are going to do that. Let me get my embosser. And I'm just going to do my usual embossing. Let me move it to the side a little bit here so that I'm not wasting huge chunks of the paper. And like I always say, so if you've been watching my videos, you know if you haven't, this is the first time you, you will see that I like to just emboss them instead of tracing them. By embossing them, I don't have to go back later and um, erase any pencil lines. And sometimes, you know, they don't erase good enough or whatever. Um, and it also seems like it helps me a little bit with the cutting. That's, for me, it does. So, And I like the way the tool fits in the template. I don't have to worry about, well, it's a little bit off because... My pencil was more on this side or more on that side on this part, but not on this part. And with the embossing tool, um, it fits right nicely inside here. This embossing tool is actually a Cricut embossing tool, um, but I like it. I like the size. I like the shape. I like the way it works. Um, 
So I have a few of these, and that's what I use. And I have one for my Cricut that's just strictly for my Cricut. And then I've got a couple in here that I use. Okay, so now I've done the whole outside using just that outside because these other ones here are going to be matte layers. But now I'm going to look for all the ones that say fold on them. And these are the ones that go across. So this says valley fold. So... I'm going to do this. This is basically scoring it already. That says mountain. This says valley. Okay. Here's a mountain fold. That's a mountain fold. Okay, so these inside lines are also um, fold lines. And I'm getting myself off. I should have just stuck with the inside ones and then gone back. But I can come back anyways so these ones that I thought were just going to be matte and layer some of them are actually the inside one is actually a matte layer so looks like two of them are matte layer ones okay this is a mountain fold Mountain fold. I want to get the one that goes across. So I'm going to look for where it says valley fold up here. And that's the line that I'm going to emboss or whatever you want to call what I'm doing. <laughs> I call it embossing. And I want to make sure I got these lines. And that says mountain, mountain, mountain. Did these already but let's just make sure valley the third line below is a mountain fold one two three and really it's the one that lines up with these others that say valley fold right and then we're gonna go down 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 down, down. So they have given two layers, matte layers. But the outside lines are your fold lines, and then the middle one here is a fold line. And it looks like I got them all. Hopefully. It's kind of harder to see the lines on white paper. Um, usually if your paper's darker, you can see it better, or if it's a textured paper, because it messes up the texture, changes the texture. And this one's not much to look at on the other side. Sometimes it's easier to see it on the other side. Not so this time. So now I'm just going to get my scissors, and I'm just going to cut along the embossed line you may not be able to see it I can see it mostly because of the reflection of the light reflecting on it makes you can see then and I'm not usually I would kind of just go up and keep cutting this off but I'm going to save this because I might want to use it for something on the card, so I'm not going to chop it all off this time. I'm going to keep it on. And this looks like it's actually going to be a pretty small card. It says it flattens to a 4 by 6 Um, but this is actually 6 by 8 so I need to finish cutting this on all the lines. Okay. And one more cut here. This one does not have any inside cuts. 
So I don't have to bring out the craft knife or the trimmer for that. Here we go. Now, I'm going to look at our instructions. On here, it shows cut around the outer edge, use a scoreboard and a scoring tool. But I already scored it when I traced it. Fold and burnish all the score lines. Fold mountain and valley folds as shown on the template to make the card base. And then use the template to draw all matte layers, cut out, fix the card, and decorate as desired. So you're really going to more use this part. Because it tells you which is what kind of fold. What's nice about this one is the middle one is valley fold all the way. So we can just fold it. And I'm just trying to fold it easy so that I'm not going to break it. But it is anyways. It happens to me all the time. Yeah, it did this way too, so okay. Now that has to be our valley fold. So the next, we have valley folds on the outside, mountain folds on the inside. So basically what that means is where you have these V's here, these V's here, those V's go up and they go up like this, 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 this is their, uh, this is Crafter's Companion's multi-purpose paper, and it has some body to it, so it's, it's gonna give me a little bit of a hard time. So then it's gonna go like that, and fold. And it'll probably do it better when I get this side done, too. Okay, so this part, this metal line is going down. And these are going up. 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 See, I'm really... This paper's stiff. Okay, so when I do this... And that folds. And I need it to go to the point. There we go. It needs to go all the way to the point. I should have come back probably. And just um, scored it a little better. But anyways, I'm going to burnish it. I'm going to burnish these. Because... This paper wants to be a little bit difficult to me. And I want them to sit nicely. So I'm just going to give them a burnish. And what I might do is, with this other side, we're going to do the same thing. And so, I think I'm just going to get my scoring tool and just score that. A little bit better with that chip and get this over here they do leave breaks in it if that makes sense what I'm saying they have breaks in the template the lines are not solid they have these breaks and that's because they got to hold that template together somehow and the only way to do that is to have those pieces there so those are not scored so sometimes you want to come in and score those yourself to get that a little bit better okay and this side I uh, went off the line that. Okay. I want to keep it. Probably should have taken it back to the scoreboard and just gone over them, but 
Oh wow, I didn't. So now I gotta do this. Okay. So these in the middle. That's gonna go up. These are gonna go down. Down. See, it helped that I scored it better. <laughs> right off the bat. Am I doing it the wrong way, though? Yeah, it needs to go in the same direction as this one. So I need it to go this way. Still going to go. And this one needs to bend here and go. And now... I can burnish these just to get a nicer lay, just so they lay nicer. So in this picture, is kind of hard to tell. It looks like they got it. This one kind of open, and then that closing in. Oh, no. because then how do you get that to stand? I just don't like when they do this. They give us a card that won't stand. I scored it the way they said. They got these two like this and this one like this, but do you see any way for me to get that to stand up? This is what irritates me. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say that I don't like these. I do. I, um, really very much like this template library, but I don't like this kind of stuff where then it don't, that needs to be up. Is that what I'm trying to do is do it the opposite way of the other one to see if that will then stand up. But I still don't see how it could. No. So. <sighs> they got them both going the same way, though. They got them both going the same way, but it does not stand up. You know, if we glued these together, there, that would work. They need to be very, uh, you see, oh my goodness. There it goes. Now it's standing. So, but it's got to be folded enough. It's got to be folded enough. Okay. So now we have mats and layers and all of that that we need to do. And I was just going to grab some of these scraps. Mm. Thought I had more. I guess not. I got a pile of stuff over here. I didn't the other day, but I do today. Oh my goodness. Okay. I got some paint purple. I can do some of the bigger ones on. And I'm just going to do the same thing. 
that I did before. Now, this is a thinner paper, and what I've done on some of them is scored it hard enough that it basically rips up paper. Gives it a different look. Um, this one actually has a double mat for here, which is kind of nice. I don't know how the mats are going to work, but it's kind of nice to have that. Okay, how many of these do we need? Four. No. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four of them. I'm just going to do them all right here and try to get that ripped. And it'll give it kind of a white edge, too. And then you don't have to cut it out. <laughs> you don't want to do this with the card because a lot of them are score lines, not cut lines for one thing. And the cardstock is um, thicker, stronger. So this is a, you know, a thinner paper. So it kind of does work with them. I need to be able to get one more. One more. I do think I could get one more there. Yeah. It's pretty tight, but it's like right on the line. Do I dare? Okay. I'll dare. It's right here. Oh, right on the line. Okay, now what you would have to do is where those spots are that I already told you about. You then got to come in and do your own line and do it hard enough for it to free it. Oof. That was kind of clumsy. Wreck. Baby's in there just ringing that bell, ringing that bell. And baby's trying anywhere. Baby's trying so hard to say love you. And it just comes out. You kind of catch the L. But the rest of it is just indistinguishable. And if I didn't know the bird, I would, I would tell people that had it, you're crazy. It's not saying nothing. It's just going, oh. <laughs> but I do think baby's trying it's just like I said they're um, the ones the one that the kind that I got a green cheek conure I got a cinnamon head green cheek conure and they're known for not being talkers like other parrots which was actually one of the reasons that that was the kind I wanted because they're a quieter, not as much of a target. Not that I don't want the bird to talk. I would like the bird to talk. But, um, 
you know, you have to consider other people sometimes. I mean, if you're not living... Where you don't, you know, I mean, you have company over and stuff and the bird's too loud and you can't hear what the other one's thinking or saying and, you know, having to say what because you can't hear over the bird. Sometimes, you know, that can be a little frustrating. So I thought, well. Um, I mean, they have a good demeanor, and they're known as a very good pet bird, you know, all of that. But there's a lot of birds with that quality, right? But but the fact that these also have the quality of not being so loud was, you know, an important factor. So, and they're not like a big bird, but they're, um, like I think a cockatiel, not a cockatoo, but a cockatiel would probably be a bigger bird than baby is. So, um, yeah. So maybe not real big, but sometimes they don't have to be that big to be good talkers, right? See, cutting that and trimming that kind of takes away from the ripped effect, but maybe I should leave that unevenness and just let it be part of the thing, but I can't take that. And so, if that bothered me, that smooth edge right there, then I could just go ahead and trim all of it, make it all smooth, but it's all right by me. So, there's our mats and layers. Where'd my card base go? Right here. So, one here. See, that's so... These are bigger, huh? Two, three. Are they or are they the same? For some reason, they look bigger. It almost feels like this part should be stuck out and these should go back. Let me see. That is not the way they got the card, though, but man, to me, that's what it feels like it should be. See? Uh, that stands good. But as soon as you fold that in, but if you fold that out, then it stays better. I don't know. Let's put these on. I want to win. So if you want to participate in the, in a swap and you think we should go for it, don't forget to leave that comment because otherwise I'll just make maybe some kind of personal arrangements with the people that do leave comments. So... You know what I might do is go ahead and I'll put my email address and you can um well no go ahead and leave a comment because I can leave you my email address when I see what kind of response there is. So we can figure it out. I need enough. Okay. I think I can turn them in upside down or whatever. It'll all turn out all right. So.
Okay. I don't know what I'm going to do about fixing the problems I've been having with glue lately. I'm looking at bottles on Amazon and um, I just don't know. I just keep having all these issues. I just don't want to. Is that just a bigger mat? No, it looks the same, but it looks bigger. No, I guess not. Okay. It's just all in my head, I guess. I was watching Paul oh, Crafters TV. I think it was last week. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. And they were doing something on a template. And somebody on one of the social media pages said, Hey, couldn't we just run it through the machine and with the embossing and emboss it that way? <laughs> yeah, you can. And here I've been doing it by hand but you know not everybody has the machines and you would have to have the big enough machine that you could get the whole template on so so I thought well I'm gonna keep just doing it this way for everybody to be able to see how I do it and to get it with new people ideas if they don't have a die cutting machine and I'm going to tell you right now if you don't have a die cutting machine and you don't want to spend the hundreds of dollars for a die cutting machine mint the marquee it's like 50 something dollars I think I think that's what I paid this. It's like $50 around there. And it is a workhorse and I love it. Now it's not big. Um, but it's not like as small as the minis either. So a lot of dies go through it. And you can go back and watch my videos and you'll see. Uh, there for a while I was using my Pro all the time. Because I could run everything through. But um you know, in one shot instead of having to go back and run more and more. And, um, I just got to where, man, I can't take up that much space on this table, you know. So I put that up on the counter thing there and brought my marquee back out. And it's, it's, it's a champion, I'm telling you. It's a champion. These, see... This is the point of it. These need to go in. Well, it's standing a lot easier now, so that's good. So if you want then to do the mats for these... They don't have mats for those. See, they don't show mats for those. So if you want mats for those, you may have to make your own by doing the outline of that shape. Or you could do the half. You know, just do that triangle. Or you could do this whole big triangle. But then you'd have to cut it down a little bit to where it fit like a mat. Um, 40 minutes, so it's a little bit, I'm trying to think if we want to, 
here if we want to. Here we go. Here we go. Gonna need glue. <laughs> there we go. What do you say? Is it gonna come out or not? All right, so now let's put this on here. <clears throat> Try to get this thing in the middle. Try to center it. Really, I'm not trying to get that design. I'm just trying to get that color kind of back there a little bit different from that color. And the way they did it is they just put that kind of to the side here. So let's do that. Oh. It just doesn't want to give me glue. You see. This is brand new, and it just does not want to come out. It's not clogged, nothing. It just doesn't want to come out. <laughs> it's like thick, and it makes the bottle feel thick and hard. And Maybe it's the temperatures, but there's heating in the house. It's not like I'm in a freezing cold house. So there's that. What else do I have that I could put on here? Let's see. What about... Uh, where did that come from? Okay. One there. Oh, don't mess up that fold. <laughs> Watch where you're putting it. You don't want to mess up the fold. Okay, that looks pretty good, right? Chipboard. I don't know if this little bit of dab of glue is going to be strong enough to hold chipboard on here. Just a little bit decorated up. Mostly I just want to show making it. And we got a little bit of decoration on there, but we want to fold it. It says it folds. Then it's going to fold. It can fold this way. 
I don't think that's the way it's supposed to fold though. I think we can fold it this way. There we go. Right? And then we open it this way. <sighs> yeah, well. So there you have it. The double gatefold card second book, first auto ship, indigo book, number three. I'm not super impressed with this one. Sorry, folks, but I've had some. I really, I really like the, the teacup one last, the last one. So, but anyways, there we go. So, um, if you like my channel, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you for joining me. Everybody enjoy the rest of your weekend. And bye-bye now.